to you guys about uh, motion control in gaming specifically. The notion of motion if you will. So let's start, uh, I actually wanted to start with some audience participation. How many of you guys here, uh, your, was, was your first motion control experience with the Nintendo Wii? All right, we've got a pretty good show of hands. That's pretty good. So, you guys, if you guys don't understand it, this point is right now. It's normal. Everyone knows what motion control is. It's been in the console. What if, I, what, if I, what if 30 years ago, I told you, I walked up to you with something that looked like a bicycle grip with a button on it, and I said, this is going to be the future of gaming. You probably think I was a weirdo. Well, apparently, Atari, Atari thought that was a good idea. Meet the sticks. 1981, actually. Atari made this device. They thought, you know, Games are cool, but we want to make a new way to interface with them. So they made this really neat motion controller, and it's actually fully mechanical. It uh, has a mercury core inside, and uh, it sends impulses to the console. When the mercury core shifts, it, move, it, it uh, moves your character around. And, well, uh, that's not funny yet. <laughs> but there was two, two reasons that this actually ended up failing with Atari. One, video game crashed in 1983. We all know how that went. Two, though, the most important reason that it failed is that there were no developers making games specifically designed to take advantage of those sticks. What was happening was developers were just making games, you know, like they did, and then afterwards they'd be like, okay, let's make those sticks compatible with this so we can move the character. So there was nothing making the little sticks special, you know, so it, it turned into a gimmick, and with the crash of 83, it, it failed really, really hard, and it was sad. Uh, there was a more interesting attempt later on. Everyone remembers the Power Glove, I assume? Uh, the Power Glove was really interesting. According to Nintendo, it was everything else's child's play. Uh, but according to Lucas Barton from The Wizard, it's so bad. And he was right when he said it's so bad, even though he didn't mean it that way. It involved a really complicated setup. It didn't involve the immersion that Nintendo wanted it to have, and a lot of kids just ended up getting frustrated with it. And that, the frustration is a key thing we'll get to that too. Uh, some other people tried some things as well. Sega entered the arena later on, the Activator. This was actually pretty cool, because hey, they thought, oh my gosh, what if we played a fighting game and you the fighter, you know, you guys, you're a martial artist or something like that. You can be the martial artist now. This thing would read your emotions from all eight directions, and that was awesome. You know, you can play a fighting game and be the martial artist you've been playing as this whole time. Except, uh, apparently, you, you can't be a martial artist if you have a ceiling fan or don't have a low flat ceiling or have any sort of lighting or reflecting things above you because it pretty much destroyed the activator's sense. So, unfortunately, that had a lot of issues, too. So you can see there's a trend, you know? There are a lot of technical issues along the way. It, it was quite a few years before somebody else tried something new. But Sony came along, they made the PlayStation Eye toy for PS2. This was kind of cool, but basically what it did was it put you in the game, so you were like looking at a mirror almost, and you were, and a, lot, a lot of the games were where you see yourself in the game, and you're kind of interacting with stuff, popping bubbles, and moving things around. So that was pretty interesting, but it didn't, I don't think it quite took off like they wanted it to. But here, this is where everything changed, I think. Nintendo came along with the Wii, and this was, I think, the first successful commercial execution. This was an easy to use, intuitive solution that people understood, and that made all the difference. And because of this, it may not be perfect technologically, but that was an amazing start. And because of that device, everyone knows that the motion control the household name now. It's a household technology, we're all familiar with it. Uh, there, that's a great example. We fit. This gift shop better be in more of the technology. I mean, we fit pulled down a billion dollars by itself. This one device, a hundred dollar balance board that you stand on, but this gave people a chance to exercise and do all these other cool physical activities in the house that were both active and relaxing, you know, a whole variety of stuff. They could do it in the, in the living room, and it was awesome. This was, this was, now we're starting to get somewhere. Now we're starting to get interactive more like you're into the game, like the game was a part of what you're doing. So, uh, Sony, they came back. They actually added, a, you know, you guys, some of you might know the six axis. In the PlayStation 3 controllers, they added in a, a, a basic tilt function. Some games actually took really good advantage of it, like Flower, for example, if you guys have played that, where you literally can control the wind by tilting the controller. And it just moves very fluidly. It, it was pretty nice. But, you know. And they actually tried to bring the eye back again. They put made a PS3 version. Higher definition camera. It's got a microphone on it now. And, you know. With the higher definition camera, there's more capabilities for uh, higher frame rates and recognizing a more complex figure. But uh, I think Microsoft, these guys had a really interesting and innovative take on it. Because here we have no controller. You know, they, I can imagine them sitting in that room. What if we had no controller whatsoever? What if we just had shopped out the controller so that nobody needs it? 
and they did it, and uh, they sold like what ten million units, I think. And even even they didn't see it coming. So even Microsoft doesn't understand the potential that Windows Control has. But they were willing to put forth the effort and the, and the resources. There you go. And some people driving with no steering wheel, but they're getting into it. And now Sony, they actually decided to implement the traditional remote control thing. You know, they had they started with the stick chassis controller, but now they brought in the, the move. So now they've got something more convenient, something people can really grip. You've got the navigation controller, and you've got the uh, motion controller. A little more accurate for me, which is really cool. So it had a higher frame rate, it had a, a little bit more interaction, and that was that's been that's actually done really well too. I don't remember the numbers, but Move has been a great success for them. They're really happy about that. So, what about PC gamers? PC gamers have been kind of just hanging out, loving their hardcore games, and uh, not really being a part of the social revolution yet. So that's not true anymore. Enter the hype. This. Uh, you can't see it very well, but I did my best. This is the Razer Hydra. This is a device that's using something called Sixth Sense technology, open call Sixth Sense from California based. Really fascinating new motion control technology. This device does not require a line of sight, uses no gyroscope, no accelerometer, nothing like that. All it uses to, to measure the position of a rotation of these controllers is a low level magnetic field. And uh, it's accurate up to one millimeter of position and one degree of rotation. So not only is this a really awesome technological advancement, but now PC, now PC gamers are going to be into this. This is coming out in June, I believe. So this is a really exciting time for PC gamers. And uh, this, Gabe Newell, president and CEO of uh, Valve, had a really interesting thing to say about this, and I really agree with this. This is kind of what we're going to get into as far as development goes. The Razer Hydra is a significant step forward for the PC gaming industry because it not only affords an almost physical experience for gamers, but also presents developers an opportunity to innovate and significantly push the boundaries on new forms of gameplay and entertainment. That second part is the key right there. That's pushing the boundaries and significantly pushing the boundaries on new forms of gameplay and entertainment. That's mainly what we're going to talk to you about today. So let's go ahead. We've been working on, a, we've actually had the pleasure of working with a Sixth Sense development kit, which is, which is pretty great. We're working on a, uh, a horror game that's coming out later this year. And it's been fun, but it's also been very, very challenging. We want to share our experience with both with, uh, with you guys working on motion control games. And uh, motion is this is probably the most important discussion I think. Uh, it's really easy I think to if after working for years or even if you're new and you've played games for years and controlled games like that, it's really easy to get in, get yourself into a mindset where your mind you drift to the, the joystick and the buttons first, you know, because that's what you're used to doing, and maybe stick in the motion control later, you know, stick with what you're familiar with first, and then add in the new stuff. But that really ends up kind of kind of biting you in the ass later on. It's really important, I think, for the motion control to be the absolute star of what you're doing. You know, you need to start with from day one with motion control as the main thing that you just, the main interface between your player and your game. And then the joystick and the button should supplement that, you know, be there to help and kind of support what's going on. Uh, Unprecedented level of precision work with, you know, you have precision work with some analog things as well, but it's not the same. When you have one to one control, you know, you're, you're, it's like a whole new frontier. You're, you're sitting here thinking, I have to account for all of these positions that happen in this, you know, this sphere around the base station that we use the controller. There's all these possibilities, there's all these rotations, all these, you know, depth even. And, you know, having to account for that is, is very challenging. So, 